What is up guys, Sergeant TNT here, we are back with another video, and welcome to a another tech video. Uh, basically, it's how much does thermal paste affect your GPU temperatures. And here's the thermal paste I have, it's a uh, thermal take... Ah, flip it around. TG7. It's like diamond encrusted or whatever. Diamond powder inside for whatever, here's the box. Uh, but let's see how much thermal paste affects GPU temperatures. So I have the 650 Ti. Um, that's about three years old, a around there, and the thermal paste hasn't gotten replaced on it at all. So we're going to see how much thermal paste affects it. And I'm also going to completely, and I'm also going to clean the heat sink off as well. So let's see how thermal paste affects GPU temperatures. So right now, that is our idle temperature right there. Hopefully, it focuses. If you can't see that, it's at 47 degrees Celsius at idle. That means no game is running at all, which isn't too bad. That's also under 30-ish percent GPU usage. So it's not terrible, but it probably could be improved somewhat. So I'm going to boot up a game, and we'll see how much it gets under load. So here is me running the GTA benchmark before, before the thermal paste is applied, and basically on my usual playing settings, which is pretty close to, it's about, it's pretty much low, um, my card isn't exactly um, an ultra gaming card, but it still runs GTA at playable frame rates, and it doesn't look that bad. There are some spots where it looks garbage, but for the most part, it's okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and let the benchmark run. Let's go ahead and alt tab and see our GPU temperature. So our GPU temperature was at its highest point 70, which is still very, uh, is still pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and detach the graph here. So, so like I said, idle was 45. So it rose, it rose about 25 degrees Celsius under load, 20 to 25, give or, give or take. So obviously. It's cooling off again, and this is at its auto fan speed and blah 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 blah. I guess I can go ahead and show you the specifications. Uh, okay, so a bunch of crap just fell behind me for no reason. So its core clock is a little over one gigahertz, ever so slightly. Its memory clock is 2,700 megahertz, and it was hitting uh, close to two gigs of video RAM. And so, and then CPU temperatures, that doesn't really matter. My CPU is pretty new. I don't, don't need the thermal paste replaced on it just yet. And we hit close to 7 gigabytes of RAM usage. So, time to go into the process of putting on the thermal paste. So I went ahead and took out the five screws on the back of the PCB of the graphics card. After removing the screws, it was just a matter of pulling the heatsink off of the PCB. I went ahead and unplugged the fan connectors so that they would be two separate units and wouldn't get in the way of each other. As you can see, there was a little bit of dust inside, but it wasn't too bad, and we'll worry about it later. I started cleaning off the thermal paste from the heatsink. 
I could tell the paste was getting pretty old. It started coming off in chunks instead of wiping off like a paste would. Now, I would like to warn you that this can void the warranty. It really depends on the graphics card you're taking apart, but uh, a lot of the times it does void the warranty, and so I was the only doing it because that card was old and didn't have a warranty on it anymore, so keep that in mind. Now after I did that, it was time to move on to the chip itself. After just a few wipes, the paste was off of the chip, and it was pretty shiny. Kinda like a tiny mirror of sorts. Another thing is that the type of alcohol I was using to clean off the thermal paste was isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol. And uh, basically it was 70%. Now, 70% will work, but it's not the greatest. You're better off doing 90 or 99% because then it's only 10 or 1% water. So it you don't have to wait for it to evaporate. With the 70%, it cleans off pretty much just as well, but you need to wait for it to evaporate, which uh, I had to do. I just want to point out that I know that there are more effective methods of removing dust off of computer parts, but I did not I didn't have any compressed air or an air compressor on me at the time, so I just tried to wipe off as much of it as I could. And thankfully the dust it wasn't too bad because um then it would have kinda changed the numbers a little bit, but it was so little dust that it wouldn't have made a big difference. So just wanted to point that out to you guys. So applying the thermal paste is the same as putting thermal paste on a CPU. Just put a tiny amount on the center of the chip or the die, and then reattach the heatsink onto the PCB and you're done. So putting the heatsink back on the PCB is pretty simple. All you do is take the fan connector, plug it in, and line up with the line up the cooler with the screw the screw holes, and uh, put all the screws back in, and there you go. So this is the process of me putting the card back together. It gets really difficult and annoying to try to line up all the screw holes properly. And then on top of that, being careful as to not get the thermal paste on any other part of the heatsink uh, slash chip. So <laughs> it, gets, it gets difficult and frustrating and stuff like that. But, you know, you got to put it back together or else it won't work so yeah that was fun did you so now with it all put back together we can put it back into my computer and let's do some more benchmarking and temperature tests hey guys we are back and here is our idle temperature we went from what I believe to be 45 to 47 degrees idle to 42 average 41 42 is sometimes 40 which is a decent a decent uh bit cooler than previously so i'm gonna kind of do some things on my desktop for a bit um and then i'll boot up gta and play single player for like a couple minutes and then run the benchmark and we'll see how much cooler it gets under load. So already we're seeing a little bit of temperature improvement, but idle temperatures don't mean that much. It's just kind of nice, but all right, I'll see you then. So here is GTA running the benchmark. Uh, after the thermal paste was applied and in game, I was getting on average of two to five FPS better. I don't know if it was because of the thermal paste or because my computer just booted up, but either way, FPS increase, I can't complain. I would also like to mention that go towards the ending of the video, you'll see a side-by-side -side comparison of before and after the thermal paste.
And why was MSI after was MSI Afterburner running? MSI Afterburner wasn't running. Rip. Okay. But it's still nonetheless the cards heated up. Oh. There it is. Okay. So under load we went to sixty five, sixty six, worst case scenario. It was around the Ooh, we went down to the high fifties, so that's honestly a pretty a pretty decent little improvement. Again, it was around the five degrees Celsius mark. So let's see. Last time it was seventy around there. So this was at best case scenario, this was a twelve degree difference, but on average it was about a seven six maybe five to seven on average so still a pretty decent little improvement and like i said i got slightly more frames very slight so if you were really really desperate for frames and your card was already running hot to begin with then go ahead and redo thermal paste get get just any thermal paste well Get decent thermal paste, anyways. This is uh, Thermal Take TG7 Thermal Grease with diamond powder inside for best thermal conductivity. And so, I'm not sure. This was just the only paste they had at Best Buy that was decently cheap. So, I mean, in those last two years, which I will probably still... I, will, I don't know how much more I'll need, but it comes in a little tiny tube. So, you know. And like I promised, here are the side-by-side -side comparisons of before and after the thermal paste benchmark. So, have a look for yourself. If not, you can close out the video from here. So, just want to let you guys know, thank you for watching and uh subscribe if you're new and follow me on twitter and twitch and like i've said like i possibly have mentioned a couple times that uh i'm gonna be working on a new intro and i'm gonna have a new outro pretty soon so within the next couple videos so stay tuned guys and like i said thanks for watching Bye bye